All right, guys, this week we're here at Maple Hill for the second playoff event. And of course, I'm trying Maple Hill Golds. Gonna show you the shots, show you what goes through my head. Let's get to the course. Hole one looks like they added something new that there's like a little uh, double mando. Uh, and you always wanna kinda land a little bit left-hand side on this fairway. And we have a little bit of a crosswind's gonna wanna push you this way, but you wanna kinda land almost in those Christmas trees on the left is kinda the aiming point where I'm going, where I'm wanting to land. This is the first time I'm throwing the Raptor Eye Christmas Edition Rive. These things are pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, you want to be kind of either lined up with it or even left. Anything right just makes it a little bit harder of a shot. So that one was just kind of an early release. Not really all the way warmed up here, but I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw a general, just a regular general this time. Try to throw a little bit wider and uh, throw a better shot. That one was, uh... that was a little bit better. So it's going to be on that left-hand side in those Christmas trees, pretty much exactly where I'm trying to land. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a good spot. I'm not really trying to go too much further right than that because that kind of leaves open the forehand. The basket's kind of through that gap and to the right, so the forehand's the, the shot that you want. There we go. That's another good one. It's going to hyze out into those Christmas trees and just kind of a scramble up and down from there. So that's what we want to do. All right, kind of do a recap. It's Monday. We're here at Maple Hill, just getting done with the Green Mountain Championships. Haven't had much time to let it soak in, but it was a great event and a great start to the playoffs. Played really solid all week. I finished the final three rounds with, what did I shoot? 11, 11, 12. So played really well and was able to get second. Gave myself a chance again down the final stretch, but Gannon played really well. Can't take it away from him. But um, yeah, on to the next one. We're here in, here in Maple Hill and this place. I've had a lot of success here as well, just like I have at the Green Mountain Championship. So East Coast golf, it seems to be my, my style of golf. I'm super excited for this time of year, no doubt about that. But uh, thanks everyone for tuning in and excited to start a new week. So we're here in the Christmas trees, which is essentially the, the shot that you wanna play for me. I would rather be left side in the Christmas trees than, than in the fairway over there, just because the angle's so much better over here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking when I'm throwing my shots on this hole is I wanna finish left come over here and have a chance to throw through the kind of clown's mouth, give myself a chance for, for a birdie. Um, see here, just kind of looking at the, the whole life. I haven't played this clown's mouth actually, this is brand new for me. So I'm just gonna try to throw a shot. I'm kind of scrambling as you can see him. It's like I'm in the woods, but I'm actually in the open and this is exactly where I want to throw. So I'm just gonna throw a kind of a flex shot just around this right side Christmas tree and kind of flex through the clown's mouth there. Something like that should maybe a little bit too far left. Yeah, so I just barely missed the gap. And you know, a lot of times when I'm throwing shots like this, it's just kind of a throw the shot and then learn from it and throw another shot. So that one, I just kind of threw it a little bit too far left. This one, throw the same shot, just started off a little bit more right, just like that. So that one's gonna be good. Should drop under the gap and be yeah, exactly right where I wanna go. So first time through this course, as you can see, first shot's maybe not the best, but make the adjustment on the second shot and it's all about learning especially the first time through after not playing for a year. Small baskets can't stop me, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so that was my second shot that went through this gap. I think uh, the biggest thing this gap does on the second shot is if you throw a bad drive and you're not lined up with the gap, you can't even go for it because it's such a unique shot. But I think it's kind of cool. Adds a unique look to it. Um, and yeah, kind of got it down. I'm going to throw a harp through that gap and kind of slide up through here and give myself an inside the circle look. Hole one, Maple Hill. Let's get it. All right, we got hole two, 380 foot uphill, par three, probably plays about 410, 420, something in that range. And we got this rock wall. That's always been a big variable on hole, hole two here. And then you also have the tree line on the left. So it's really, you got to trust your shot, not only trust your shot angle, but you're also your disc angle release and how your disc is going to fly. So it almost feels sometimes like you're throwing over the wall, which is kind of, because you got to start your disc on Annie and normally that disc would carry over the wall. But since you're going uphill, that, that same disc that would normally go over the wall is going to then hyzer out because of how much uphill slope we got here on hole two. So I'm throwing my Explorer. I'm going to throw a little bit of a broken in one because it's going uphill. I'm not going to throw my stable one because that one's just going to want to go too far left. And I'm going to start it on this left-hand side of the tree line and try to turn it into the gap. I'm not going to start it in the gap and turn it OB. I'm starting left side and turning it into the gap, hoping to fly through there. So I started in the gap and turned straight OB like I talked about. 
unless it gets a kick or something. Looks like I kicked barely safe, but um, try one another one here. And I'm just gonna try to start this one a little bit wider left here. Ah, uh, nope, just a little bit too wide again. So as you can see, a very specific shot. Those ones are just gonna be kind of layup for, layups for par without the birdie chance. Um, but I'm gonna throw another one here just to get some good muscle memory going on here. Another explorer, and uh, yeah, just try to hit the gap. Oops, there we go, that's much better. So that one's gonna hit the gap. Should be about 20, 30 footer from short. Way better shot. So just kind of trusted the gap, learned from those first two flights. Obviously I didn't throw a good shot, but I learned exactly what the wind's doing, what the angle of that disc is doing. Because my release point from, from last year to this year changes a little bit. So the same shot I threw last year might not work this year. So you gotta make those slight adjustments. You know, you go day to day. Every day is a little bit different with your form. And so a hole like this, you just gotta learn. You need to throw a bad shot. It's not a round where I'm getting, I'm getting judged on how my shots are right now. I'm learning from my bad shots and getting those out of the, out of the, um, out of the way so that way I can focus on what I wanna do, not what I don't wanna do. So if there's a bad time to throw a bad shot, it's in a practice round when you're learning from it. So yeah, I just kinda play a couple putts from here super windy right now which is i like i like playing in windy scenarios especially when when you're um when you're uh, playing a practice round because you can learn you know it's a lot easier to go from playing a windy course a windy hole and then and then getting no wind during the tournament and that's what i think is is that most ideal for practice rounds learn the hole at, at its hardest at its hardest and then when it feel when it's no wind and it's easy it'll feel a lot easier for sure as you can see, a lot of rollaways on this on this hole, <laughs> no doubt about that. But um, yeah, hole two, it's challenging. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like a lot of holes on the Pro Tour. If you don't throw a good drive, you're just chipping up for par. Um, and by the time the week goes on, I'm gonna get a lot of birdie putts and learn how to get a birdie putt during the tournament. All right, hole three, 407 feet. This is a classic Maple Hill hole, kind of a forced flex. And you have this one tree in the middle that you have to force flex around. And uh, type of hole definitely where the error is to go too much flex and hit the gap and just keep turning because if you hyzer out early it's just de you're dead it's just an automatic bogey almost unless you get a miracle up and down so i'm just thinking about hitting this gap turning right and if a hyzer back at the end great if i just go dead straight and keep turning i got a 40 50 footer for 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 birdie and if i miss that an easy par so throwing just a first run foul and just on a little flex just like that that's a pretty good shot, just a little bit. I'm happy with it, just a tiny bit more turn, but overall, I was really happy with the release. Just need a one inch more turn. There we go. That one's better. So that one's gonna hyzer back at the end and skip to about 30, 40 short. Yeah, so that one's exactly what I want. Same exact disc, same, they're both beat up pretty much the same, and just kind of held that turn to make sure I got through that gap before I started hyzering. So as you're seeing, the first shot is just a learning curve. Learn the angle, learn the wind, learn my release point, and then the second shot is what I'll probably end up doing once I'm dialed in. So one thing I do notice a lot of people, uh, a lot of amateurs especially, sometimes pros even, is a lot of times they'll put too much emphasis on, emphasis on the result of their shots, especially in a practice round, kind of put too much pressure on themselves. For me, I use a practice round to learn. I'm throwing shots, obviously I'm trying to throw good shots to build that muscle memory and confidence in my, in my swing and everything. But if I don't throw a good shot like this one, it's something to where I'm learning from it. I'm not judging the result of it. Oh, I hit a tree. No, I'm just learning how, how, how did I throw that and how can I get better on the next one that I throw? Instead of being you know, pissed off about the result of that shot, it really doesn't matter. I'm just out here to practice and learn my form, learn how my discs are flying on certain holes and all that stuff. So putting too much pressure on, especially the first shot through a course I haven't played in a while. You know, it's, it's all, I'm out here to practice and learn the course and learn how everything's flying. So that's, that's the number one thing that's important to me out here. Not necessarily that I step up here and just park every hole. Of course, that would be nice. Like that's a good shot and I'm happy about it, but I just, you know, through the shot, learned how, how this disc flies on this hole. And then, you know, I know, I know I can throw this disc or the other disc now that I know, you know, kind of how it flies through that gap. So not judging on the results is something that I think a lot of people can take away when you're practicing and trying to get better. All right, hole four, this is a tough gauntlet, par three. It's the epitome of hitting the gap or die. So basically, you know, a lot of people, some people jump putt, some people throw forehand, some people throw backhand. 
whatever their most comfortable shot is just to hit the gap. That's the number one most important thing. Hit the gap and after that, you just wanna try to get a putt down there. Cause if you hit one of these early trees, you're risking bogey. But for me, I'm gonna throw a soft harp because we got this down slope. And I know, as you guys know, I talk about the, uh, me picking softer discs on super fast greens, which is exactly what this is. So I'm gonna stand on the far left of this tee pad so that way I can open up the gap. If I stand over here, it kind of closes off the gap, especially for a forehand. If I'm a backhand, I'm gonna to wanna to stand here to open up the gap. But since I'm throwing forehand, I'm gonna go left side here and kind of just as far corner as I can and kind of lean this way, contort my body to kind of open up this gap. It's small to begin with, so you wanna make sure to open it up as big as you can. I'm gonna to try to throw it down low, just like that, and it should skip a little bit, just like that, perfect. That's exactly what I wanna do. And so that's about 20 feet short. And as you've seen, that disc didn't really skip as much. If I throw a, a stiffer plastic, it might wanna skip and jump right into the water. So that height, as low as that looks, it's exactly what I wanna do. Just barely miss this wooden post up front here and then skip down there. So yeah, I played that one perfect, so I won't throw another one, just leave it at that. All right, so as you see, lots of roots, lots of stumps and stuff like that. Um, all in all, I threw a pretty solid shot here with my soft harp so it doesn't skip. And uh, now it's just putting a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, as you see, you see how sloped this, uh, this, this screen is. So you really don't wanna go long. So anything short, 20, 30 feet is pretty much ideal. You don't wanna risk launching off this wood and going OB risking bogey. So soft disc, forehand, that's the play here, hole four. All right, hole five, 262 foot par three. This one's been aced a bunch, but this, the key on this hole is just the height of your disc. You wanna make sure to throw it real high so that way it has time to come back to the right because the gap you're shooting through is out over the water and it kind of points you away from the basket. And how you can compensate for that is throwing it higher so that way it gives it that, that much more time to, th to, to kind of hyzer back to the safe zone. So if I throw it high, I know my disc has a lot more time than if I throw it low, it might uh, hit, the, hit the water or hit the boards or something. So I'm throwing an overstable felon nice and high and hopefully letting it crash in. Nice and high, just like that, and it should just kind of spike right on it. That's exactly what I want to do. So yeah, and it kind of hits and sticks like this. So when you're landing on the green like this, especially, is it's going to want to, if you're going to throw a glidey hyzer, it's going to want to hit and skip way too far right. But if I'm throwing a spike like that, it's going to want to hit and stick and not go too far to the right. So I'm going to throw another one here. Pretty much the same shot. Try to play, play the spike, the spike down, nice and high again, and. Just like that, should spike down, should be in all, it's almost, it's almost impossible to land left of this pin. You pretty much just wanna play anything 25, 30 feet right of this pin, it's a successful shot. Anything left of the basket is pretty much a bad shot that just got lucky and a good result. I'm trying to throw it too far right, hyzer out right, spike down, and play that 25, 30 footer. That's kind of the sweet spot because you got water and all danger left. You don't even wanna mess with that. You wanna just make sure your disc is to the right, give yourself that birdie putt, and, um, you know, just get up there and, and uh, assess the situation once you're safe and not risk that out of bounds drive. Got to my second shot. This one was the little bit more glidey hyzer as opposed to spiking hyzer. This has got the, the glidey skip to about 50, 60 feet, which is not ideal. And then if we go up here, you can see the big difference between the angle of your disc landing on the green. This one got more of a spike, um, spike landing to where it just kind of sticks like this and kind of stops right here versus this one has the more glidey release, it's gonna to wanna to hit on edge like this and shoot over to the right. So that's the difference between throwing overstable and a little bit less overstable to where you get the glidey skip. So they're both forehand hyzers, but they both hit the ground and land completely different, giving it a different reaction, which affects how close you are to the pin on a hole like this. All right, hole six, we got 390 foot par three. Forehand, I think is what I'm gonna go with. You see some people take the hyzer flip, but I like the forehand. I'm gonna go try to go down this straight gap so you can kind of see you can't really see it from the from here, but you'll see once we walk up there, there's a middle tree on the right-hand side that kind of separates the right from left gap. And I'm pretty much just trying to go dead straight. I'm not really trying to hyzer with the forehand. If I just throw it dead straight with the forehand and pure it, then I got a putt. This is the type of hole that's really challenging. You don't want to get too cute with it and try to just miss certain trees and get a little bit closer to the basket. Just throw it dead straight and take your putt from there. That's, that's what I'm thinking about on this hole. So that looks good. I turned it a tiny bit too much. But um, I mean, from there, it's just, a, it's just a par, which that's really, to be honest, as hard as this hole is, that's not a bad shot. Hit and dropped right in the middle of the fairway. And I got a pretty routine par. I'm gonna try one more to see if I can't get all the way through there, the gap. 
this time. There we go. So that's way better. It's a little bit too far right, but it should be a putt. Yeah. So that looks like it should be about 50 feet short. I went a little bit right of the tree that I want to go left of. Um, and then we got a little bit of a crosswind coming. I thought the crosswind was going to kind of turn it. So this one's a criminal, a little bit faster disc. So I'm going to throw a little bit faster down this gap. Just like that. That's going to be good. It should hyzer skip to the right. Ah, uh, okay. So it was a good shot. I hit that, those wood chips and kind of skipped. If it doesn't hit that tree, it's going to be a putt. Um, but all in all, I got through the gap on all three shots. Uh, should be just a par at worst. And on a hole like this, you want to get a birdie look, and you definitely want to get up there. But it's a type of hole where you can get a two-stroke swing, three-stroke swing on your competitors if you're not careful. So you, it's just the type of hole you do not want to get too cute on. Throw it down there, hit the gap, and after that, just um, assess the situation. Um, anytime on, a, on tough holes like this that you can kind of hit the gap for the most part and take away the bogey chance, um, even if I'm not getting a birdie on a hard hole like this, um, yeah, the, but there's, there's so many people bogey and double bogey this hole that um, you just want to eliminate that out of completely out of the game plan. And um, that's why I said like hitting the initial gap and hitting a late tree like this first one is not the end of the world. And I'll show you why. Because I'm landing here and yeah, I would love to not hit that tree. It was a great shot. I threw a really good shot and I barely clipped the tree and dropped, but there's nothing wrong with that. I'm here. I got a wide open shot now. I can potentially have a chance to throw it in if I want to, like just like that. That one might've actually won OB. So like, so for a shot like this, if I'm in a tournament and not with you guys, I'd probably just chip it over there. And just to make sure that I can, that's like, that's parked. Just to make sure that I'm not gonna do like I, what I did with the first one. The first one I was trying to throw it in and kind of got a little bit too cute, what I call it. Try to throw it in that brings in the out of bounds to the right hand side. So now you can see the difference between just playing for par because I'm too far away. And then the, the second one, or the first one playing for the throw in and got the penalized penalized for uh, going OB. So, and then we'll go up, take a couple putts from that, from my, uh, my clean drive where I'm about 40, 50 feet short. And that's a solid drive on this hole. Very birdieable from here. Um, pretty much take away bogey. I got a putt. I'm hoping to make it even if I don't. Um, obviously I'm not even thinking about not making it. I just want to focus on how, how to eliminate that bogey chance, which this drive did for sure. So, so yeah, two out of three from there, not bad. This one was a pioneer. And um, yeah, so I know how to scramble for par. I know how to get that birdie putt if I throw a good drive. So I just feel comfortable with all the scenarios that play out when I come up to this hole and play it in the tournament. All right, hole seven, we got 422 feet of left to right forehand goodness, it looks like. <laughs> it's a new basket, new, completely new fairway, new basket, new everything. The basket kind of to give you guys reference is kind of through this right gap if you go dead straight that way but the main gap is this way so you're going to force you to kind of throw what looks like to me a better a forehand shot that's going to kind of go out through the gap and then go just right of that leaning tree if you start going right at that point you're going to be somewhere inside circle two for sure depending how good you throw it maybe inside circle one so throwing at that leaning tree with hyzer trying to hyzer right in front of it just like that we'll see kind of what happens now Okay, so I like that shot. I think I might even be a little bit too far to the right, but I hit the gap pretty much like I wanted to. I might need to carry a little bit straighter on this one. There we go. That one I like a lot more. So go straight and then hyzers. Yeah, I hit the tree. Like I said, not really worried about the result. I threw it really good. Really good release. Everything was great about it. So yeah, just kind of somewhere between those two. Um, that last one I actually liked a lot better than the first one as far as how I snapped it and how it kind of popped out of my hand. Obviously hit the tree, but I'm not really worried about the result on that. Um, yeah, just how, how I'm a field player, how it feels coming out of my hands is more important than if I had a random tree 450 feet down the fairway. So yeah, that's kind of the tree that I hit. It's kind of the one you want to just, just break just in front of. Like I threw a, just a smooth four, you know, 420 forehand and this is kind of where I am, which I'm not mad about. Um, I'm just, you know, I just didn't really know the hole. And so kind of, I'm going to practice a couple more backhands on this hole just to, just because the angle is a little bit, seems like it's a little bit better on the, on the backhand because it's not really, it's not as far to the right as it looks. I thought it was more like over there. Whoops. Um, I thought it was more like 
over here the basket, but it's actually that way. So that leaning tree, that one, that first, that second one I threw, if I don't hit that, I'm going straight to the basket. And this one, I just threw it too high and it gave it too much time to hyzer out. So once again, just kind of learning the new hole like I, like I did on the first and the second drive. Um, but yeah, I like it. I think it's gonna be, gonna be a good hole. It almost feels like it could be definitely a backhand turnover instead of the forehand, just because of the way it shapes. All right, hole eight, we got 364 feet. Water carry pretty much the entire way. What I'm thinking about this hole, I'm thinking kind of, I'm right between speeds on my discs, like a general 12 speed or a criminal, which is a couple, a couple notches slower. But what I'm throwing, I would like to definitely, 360 is normally a criminal, but there's water short. So I wanna make sure I completely avoid that. And so I disc up and how I kind of counter that is I just throw it higher. So a disc that's faster, like, like the general, I can kind of control the distance control by throwing up. Instead of like a criminal, I'm gonna to wanna to throw it forward and line drive it. This, I'm gonna to wanna to throw it nice and high and kind of let it give it time to kind of die back. So that because they got water short, I wanna go over the water. And then after I get over the water, kind of die. And so how I can do that is throw it nice and high, which I'll do with that one. So I'm throwing, I threw that a little bit wide, but it should have time to hyzer if it doesn't hit that tree. So yeah. So that was a little bit short. I didn't quite throw it enough. I kind of threw it a little bit too much up instead of forward, which is okay. But once again, learning. This one's gonna be pretty much the exact same shot. So that's the same shot, I just threw it higher and this one should be pretty much money. A little bit short again. So as you can kind of see, I'm probably landing just, you know, not bad. It's not like I'm throwing them in the water. I'm barely in the water, which is okay. I'm just not throwing them quite as far. Um, but this one I'm gonna pop a little bit more and should definitely hit the land. See how I threw more of a penetrating shot? It's gonna go further and it shouldn't really even be anywhere close. So yeah, kind of just slowly getting used to the distance. And you can see how I kind of the first two, I kind of threw like what I call like a parachute to where it's gonna come down at the end. That one, I just threw like a line drive straight at it, which I'm gonna throw one more just to kind of drill that muscle memory into my head of throwing like a line drive instead of throwing up. And that's the difference between going in the water and not. So we'll throw, throw it low, line drive, boom, way better. That's guaranteed to be safe unless it hits that random tree right there. So yeah, those, those second two, way lower, way more of a line drive as opposed to up and then falling into the water. So that's a dis distance control tip. Throwing up affects how far forward it's gonna go. Definitely a general kind of throwing that line drive line as opposed to the up in the air line. So got the, got the black and the blue, those are my go-tos right now. Um, but yeah, throwing that line drive forehand, that's the play, making sure you control the height, which gets you out over into the inbound zone, which is what you want. Hit the wood chips and stop. All right, we got hole nine. We got 650 feet to the A pin, 850 feet to the B pin. So haven't played the B pin yet, but I think the first and second shot are gonna be the exact same. Uh, just gonna have to change the uh, shot on the third shot if you're going to the par five position. But the drive's the same regardless. You're gonna throw a hyzer flip through this gap with kind of a flippy, flippy distance driver because you still need to get a lot of distance. We also have a crosswind and we're also going uphill. So how you counter that is you throw a little bit more flippy. I'm definitely gonna throw my more flippy general of all. This is when I threw, threw on hole 18 uh, yesterday at the GMC. So it kind of goes up and kind of wants to turn. So really just focus on hitting this gap and I just wanna land straight, even a little bit to the right if I can. So that was really close. Once again, I hit the tree and, and bounced, but really happy with that release. I released it really, really clean, really good angle, just a, a half an inch to the right. There we go. That one's really good too. A little bit right, once again, but they're coming out, ripping out of my hand. That's something I'm really looking for in my releases is how it's coming, how it's popping out of my hand. And those two really popped out good. I'm getting a lot of turn, coil, and coming through. So, yeah, that one's good. Should be a little bit left, but that should be very playable. So, that last one was the best result, but not my best shot. So, just as far as the feel goes. I'm all about feel. Those first two that kind of hit trees were actually way better shots for me. I'm a lot more happy with them because um, I'm not a result-oriented player at all. I'm all about hitting the gap. If something bad happens, whatever. Um, but, yeah, so... Just really wanting to focus on getting my form dialed. That's for me. If my form feels good, I'm gonna get the results. I don't have to focus on it. So, um, but yeah, this is one of the harder tee shots on the course. As you can see, it's, it's very challenging.
Because if you hit something and do bounce, you're scrambling for par or even bogey. And that's kind of how a lot of these holes are, is if you hit trees on any of the shots, you're just, birdies completely out of the question. Now you're just scrambling to save par, if that. See like a shot like this. You're just throwing some sort of shot like that, just to flex over Annie to get to the middle and you know, trying to get up and down from there. So yeah, I mean, there's really not much to practice when you're out of position. I've scrambled so much. I know that, hey, just take your medicine. Don't do anything stupid. And the thing is when you're out of position out here, there's nothing, you can't really do anything stupid. There's so many trees that there's really no scrambling. You just chip out and go from there because there's just no angles. You got hills, you got trees and all these weird corners um, that makes it that much more challenging. All right, so I threw a really good drive on that five, that third one that didn't hit a tree, and that leaves me pretty much with almost nothing. And that's kind of this hole, is you really have to throw absolutely perfect, and if you don't, it's just a literal chip up. So this is good. If I'm in a tournament, this is my shot right here. Literally that. Because there's literally nothing else you can really do. You got a blind corner, you got a hill, you got all these different things going on. So it's there's really no, there's no scrambling, because you're literally, you're trying to throw down, but you have to throw up because this hill forces you up, but then the basket's down. So there's just so many variables that are uncontrollable that you just kind of take your medicine. There's no angle from there and just try to get up and down from there, which is not super hard. Um, and then we'll have to see also where the par, um, the par five pin is at. It looks like it's back to the right. So, so it looks a lot more challenging. So yeah, we'll just kind of play to this short pin first, throw a slammer, this would be and this hole, even this, this short pin, is basically like a par four and a half. You're not going to see very many people three in it. You'll see, of course, there's always going to be those couple people. But more times than not, four is going to basically feel like a birdie. Um, but yeah, just throw kind of a slammer out wide. Just let it kind of swing back. And just, yeah, just a disc that's not really going to glide, which is that's exactly what a slammer is. So now we'll see kind of where this other pin is at. So the other pin's up there. So if I lay up here, it really doesn't look like doesn't look like there's much of a shot i'd have to literally like do something like like that again to basically then throw a shot so we'll go down there kind of to the flat spot and see where that is because there's really side slope trees everywhere like there's really not much you can really do from right here so i'm just going to go down there and kind of see where that that layup's at and then kind of just go from there so yeah we know where the par four pin is we know what to do on that if we throw a good drive, we can attack it. If we don't throw a good drive at all, it's just going to be a layup for a four, and that's fine. Like I said, four is basically a birdie on a hole like this. So we got the par five spot. I'm going to just throw from here just because this is kind of the flattest spot, and this is some, a spot that I would definitely play to in a tournament. Uh, I'm going to throw kind of through this right side gap with a general just to see. Uh, basically, if you hit any of these trees, it's coming straight back in the water. So I'm going to throw a general on the first shot that I don't really care about, that I don't don't have too much of a connection with just because I already know what's going to happen with the way this hill is. If I hit any tree, it's bouncing directly into the water, gone forever. So I'll try to hit through the gap and just see the distance of this shot so I can kind of get a feel for it. Split through the gap. Nope, nope, right in the water. See, I knew exactly, that's exactly what happened. I manifested that. So, which is fine. I'm not, I'm, I don't even care about that really, to be honest. So what I did learn about that is like the trees are a lot further than it looks because I ripped a driver. And it looked like I was past them and then I ended up hitting them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my aiming point to a little bit wider because I know I can fly for a little bit longer before I get to those trees. So I'm going to throw a little bit wider. Just like that. And that's money. So I'm not going to hit the trees. Going to get up there and be putting. Even if I've hit those trees, I'm fine with that. Because you just don't want to hit these initial trees. You hit these initial trees in a tournament, you're completely cooked. You lost your disc and you have to take a double, triple bogey or whatever you're gonna take. So very challenging hole. Um, yeah, it's it's very tricky, but I think it's gonna be good. It's gonna score like a par six, I think, is what it feels like, to be honest, because of how uh, challenging it is. So you got a par four and a half here and you got a par six up there. <laughs> That's what I got out of these, these this whole, the two changes. It's Maple Hill, these holes are tough. And I like that, I like the tough challenge for sure. This was just a tap in. That's the par four position. And now we're gonna walk up to the par five position up here. Just in case I do happen to hit one of these trees in the tournament, I can get a feel for this upshot and what it kind of what it kind of feels like. Um, so I'll throw a couple just just to get the kind of distance control down. 
Oh, almost went in. <laughs> that was cool. Um, but yeah, just now, now I threw those couple shots. If I do happen to go OB, which obviously that's never the plan, I can have some sort of memory bank to go off of on how to throw that shot. Now we're gonna go up to the scenario where I threw a good shot and I've actually got a birdie putt. So that's kind of where this would be. The second one that where I made the adjustment, I got across the pond, didn't hit any guardian trees. And this is gonna be look like a very realistic scenario for when I'm putting for birdie. So kind of get a feel for this putt, how much uphill, how high the release point needs to be, all that kind of stuff. So I can build some sort of, um, yeah, feel for it. So yeah, that's hole nine. We've got two different pin positions. Gonna be a fun hole. All right, guys, thanks for watching the front nine out here at Maple Hill. Now let's tune into the back.